Hi, welcome to lab two for OPS 235. So I've gone ahead and started up my uh, C7 host virtual machine. Um, I have set it to full screen over here, but you can see I have, this is my usual setup running off VMware. Um, so I'm just going to go back over here. So uh, the purpose for this lab is going to be setting up the other three virtual machines um, that we need for this course. Uh, these are going to be nested VMs, meaning that we are creating them inside C7 host. So we have a virtual machine that's going to be running virtual machines. Okay. Um, we have several different ways that we're going to be doing this. Uh, the first one is going to be graphical. Then we're going to be doing a minimal install. It's going to only have a terminal. And uh, the third method that we're going to use to install is going to be with a kickstart configuration file. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing that they ask you to do is to be doing a yum update. Um, so as you can see here, Um, I have logged in as root and uh, I've already run yum update and uh, nothing is marked for update so we're all good if you do end up having any issues um, please take a look at this warning sign over here okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to be um, installing our uh, virtualization software. So this is not going to be using VMware, but this is going to be using something that's kind of similar. Um, so the command that you've got over here is yum install QEMU, well a bunch of stuff over here. Um, so what I can do actually, in general I don't recommend that you be cutting and pasting too much into the command line. Um, just for the, f for the fact that we want you to remember um, how to do certain commands and things like that, but when you get something like this, um, you know, there's a high likelihood of, you know, making a typo and having things go wrong. So I'm just going to do control C in my browser over here and then, oh yeah, that's right, that's inside my VM, so that's fine. I'm just going to do this and I'm going to do this. So the way that you paste into the shell is not with control V but with control shift V okay um, the little backward slash over here just means that we're sort of continuing on the next line so um, we'll run that and we should let that installation go is this okay I'm gonna say yes Okay, so one of the nice things about Linux, um, which makes it kind of similar to uh, Macs, Macs uh, rather than Windows, is uh, that we use package managers. So there are these um, repositories of all sorts of um, you know utilities. Uh, since it's Linux, a lot of them are very like you know open source and can be freely downloaded and used and whatever. Um, so that's what we're doing when we run yum update or yum install is we're using the package manager yum to basically um, find a bunch of software that we want to use and uh, just download it and install it so it's um, it's actually very very handy and uh, one of the things that kind of makes Linux really really nice to work with okay so now that's done I'm what I'm gonna do is reboot my VM and okay so let me just bring up Firefox again and while we're doing that, I will also bring up my terminal. I'm going to drop that over there. And once I get Firefox up, I'll just throw it over there as well. And maybe one thing that I'll do right now, since we're waiting, um, I'm going to probably need to be logged in as root, so I'm just going to do that right now. There we go. Aborted has is, is detected one problem for more information. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that later on, but um, if I'm correct, this shouldn't cause me any major issues as we proceed with this lab. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is just search for OPS 235. You can see I got my history here, so let's do that. 
So we've completed the um, update and we've in, we've installed this software. Now let's take a look if we can find it right now actually. So you will see something over here. This is under uh, System Tools, Virtual Machine Manager. So this is a alternative to VMware um, that is free and open source. There's no licensing or anything like that. Um, it's a maybe seems a little bit more bare bones, but I've always had very good luck with it. So we're going to be using this to be setting up our other uh, virtual machines. But uh, before we get to there, we're probably going to have to be doing some more stuff. Okay, so we have done the restart. Uh, we're going to start the virtualization service over here. Okay. No messages, so usually no news is good news. So let's uh, let's assume that went okay. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, disabling Firewall D, and we are going to be installing IP tables. Um, Firewall D is uh, slightly newer than IP tables. Uh, they're both sort of uh, firewall um, applications, I guess you could say. Um, in this course, we focus on IP tables. Um, just because we do. Um, both of them are used in a lot of different places, so it kind of doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, you know, if you if you choose to learn about Firewall D, um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you will feel, find quite a bit of uh, uh, parallels between the two uh, systems. So what I've done is I'm disabling Firewall D, that means uh, we don't start Firewall D on startup anymore, and I've stopped the service. And the next thing that I'm going to do is use another uh, package manager command. So we've had yum update, and that um, downloaded a bunch of updates and you know security updates for our software that we already have, right? Uh, the next thing we did was yum install, which was to get new software, in this case, uh, virtual machine manager and all the other virtualization stuff that we need um, and this is yum remove so this is uninstalling software so I'm gonna do that is this okay yes okay that's complete so now what I'm gonna do is do yum install for IP tables services So you can think of services as uh, being kind of um, similar to the processes that you see uh, when you're running Task Manager. If you do a Control-Alt-Delete on your Windows machine, you see a lot of uh, things running in the background, right? So services are very much the same. Um, so in this case, we have a firewall application, right? Your Windows machine also has usually a built-in firewall um, that you usually want to be using. Um, you don't have to start that from the start menu or anything like that. It should be always be running in the background. Um, so that kind of tells you what um, services are. They are services running in the background. And the way that we usually um, interact with them is with the systemctl command. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to enable IP tables. And then I'm going to start IP tables. Uh, I'm getting a bit lazy, so what I'm going to do is press the up key. I'm going to hit control and my left arrow key and just turn on, change this to start. Okay, no news is, is good news, but just to verify that that's happened, I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, and let me write it, let me type in status this time. And we should see that this is active and you will see some uh, messages over here so everything seems to be working okay we're gonna talk more about this as we go okay the next thing that we're gonna be doing is they want us to run vert manager as a regular user not as root so we have done that because we've opened it up from the uh, applications button over here uh, so we can most likely be moving on to part two of this stuff Okay, so on to part two. 
Uh, the first thing that they're asking us to do is to be changing this file over here in boot. Um, so we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing that with Vim. Um, you could choose to use Nano if you prefer, but I think um, generally Vim is a really great tool. There's a learning curve. Nobody, nobody will uh, doubt that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty great. Just give you know you got to give it some time. So anyway, let's take a look. Um, let's see if we can go into boot slash efi slash. I'm using tab just to make sure that this stuff actually exists. So ce tab, and I get into CentOS. So let's go there. Let's take a look. look. Um, if, if you remember, remember from last, last video, video um, ll is a shortcut for ls dash l. Um, that's the way I prefer to be doing stuff. Um, so we see grub dot config over here. So I'm just going to be opening that. You just go back up to the top. I'm going to be searching for Linux EFI. And I'm getting something. Hopefully, it looks similar to what we have over here. And it is kind of. So what I'm going to be looking for actually is um, a moment after language equals en.ca. So here we go. It looks like it's at the very end of this line. So I'm going to use dollar sign to get to the very end of the line here. And then I'm going to use append to start typing in. So that was A to get append. And I'm going to type in kvm.intel nested equals 1. OK? And I can see the next line after that is init r, dfi, whatever it is. Uh, so that should be fine. Press escape, colon, and x. OK. So hopefully nothing explodes when I reboot this. Um, so why don't I try that right now? We'll take a look. I'll restore my session. Thank you very much. OK. So um, we successfully rebooted. So I think probably I didn't mess up this part. Um, but I'm going to take a moment just to, um, I'm going to enter this command. Uh, cat slash sys slash module slash k no nothing for that kvm kvm intel parameters nested and I get a y back so that means everything should be good if you don't get like if you don't get a y here um, turn back now fix your problem before you proceed that's just the best way to be doing stuff okay Okay, so we're about ready to start with our uh, first VM, which is going to be uh, CentOS 1. This is going to have a graphical user interface. I'm going to use um, the URL over here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, uh, doing a slightly different way of installing this. We're going to be installing it from uh, this URL instead of grabbing an image and then downloading the image and then mounting that image. Um, so we're going to go over here, we're going to click on this button over here for uh, creating a new um, virtual machine. We're going to do a network install. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to use this uh, URL that I copied there. Um, I actually want to be using the one that is not the Seneca College one because I want to be, um, uh, I'm doing this from home, so I'm going to be using uh, the uh, from home URL. And uh, you should see something pop up over here. So I'm going to go forward. Um, for RAM, I'm going to make sure that I have 2048. Uh, CPUs, we can see, keep the same. So I'm going to go forward. Uh, I'm going to set this to be 15 gigabytes rather than 10 gigabytes. And it's important that you set this to be uh, CentOS 1. Um, it just makes things easier if we keep the same naming scheme as what we're doing in the labs. Um, 
and I'm going to make sure that I customize configuration before install. I'm going to click finish here. I am going to go to CPUs and make sure that I copy the host CPU configuration. Okay, and I'm going to begin installation. Uh, so I forgot to click apply, so I'm going to apply it now. So click yes. All right, so this will most likely take a little while. Um, so I will pop back in once we get to the rest of the configuration. Okay. So um, after a certain amount of time, um, you should be getting to a screen like this. It may take quite a long time to get to any sort of uh, screen like this. Um, but be patient and give it time. Uh, most likely it hasn't crashed. Most likely it's just uh, downloading what it needs to download. So we're going to set this to be uh, Toronto. Um, you will see a screen to set uh, the proper language. So hopefully you set the proper language. Um, for this one we're going to make sure that we um, are setting up GNOME Desktop once again. Same as our C7 host. Click done. Um, over here, um, we're already seeing Ethernet set up, so that's great, but we're going to make sure that we set, turn this, uh, we're going to give this host name uh, CentOS 1. Uh, just the same as our, our image name. Okay, uh, so this is going to get um, installed in a second. Uh, I'm going to go over here. This is going to be a little bit different than our C7 host. So we are going to set it to be I will configure partitioning. We will click done. Um, but then we're going to collect, click here. Uh, we're going to create things automatically. There's one thing that we need to change um, when we get past this point. So I'm going to give it a moment to do what it needs to do. Okay, so the one change that we have to do on this screen, we have to go to root and we have to make sure that it is set to ext4. Okay, once we do that, that's the only thing we're changing. We'll click on done. So if you don't see this screen, um, something will have gone wrong and you should check what you're doing. Um, but remember the things that you should be changing are this one, GNOME Desktop, uh, the custom partitioning, but just let it set automatically and uh, change the host name over here. So I'm going to click this. Um, hope. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, maybe we're going to be setting root password uh, to the same as what we have on C7 host. And we're going to create a user the same as what we have on C7 host with the same passwords. Uh, like I may have said, that's not good practice in the real world, uh, but it's going to make our lives easier in the lab. So that's done. Over here. I am going to create a user with my full name and it will create a nice shortened version. Okay, we'll just wait for this process to complete. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, under power, turn off the blank screen. Okay. Um, now I should probably follow things in order. So the next thing they're asking you to do here is perform a yum update. Um, so that would be a good thing to do, but just to show you the output of IF config. So what you get here is several different devices. Uh, there's a virtual bridge here. We're not going to record this one. Uh, this is a loopback device. 
So loopback device is something, it's basically a virtual network interface. Um, we use it a lot for troubleshooting, for testing. Um, if you end up doing a lot of web development, uh, one thing you might do is um, be testing everything on localhost, which is basically this. So this is not what we're looking for here. Up here where you see INET, this is going to be our IP uh, v4 address. We're not really dealing with uh, IP6 yet. Um, that's something for the future maybe. Uh, but this is absolutely right here the, uh, the IP address that you should be recording in your lab book. So as you can see my yum update is complete. I'm going to move on to the next step which is to uh, basically do what we did uh, for C7 host and that is to get rid of firewall D. Um, we'll need to disable it. So one thing to note about the difference between disabling versus uh, stopping. So when I stop the service it's going to stop right now. Um, but disable means that it's not going to be started in the future. Uh, same thing with enable versus start. If I'm starting a service, I'm starting it right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be started um, the next time I reboot. So to do that, you'll need to enable. So once I've stopped this, I can remove firewall D and then I will install IP tools. Yes, that's okay. Perfect. So now I can install IP tables services. As we go, um, it's always important to be um, making sure that uh, the things that you're doing successfully complete. Um, so always make sure you're like reading the messages that happen after you run commands. So I'm going to enable IP tables here and it's not letting me do it so it's because I'm not using yum I should be using system CTL so perfect example about what I'm talking about um, no such command enable uh, but uh, I figured it out so now I've created a sim link the sim link is what I want to what I want to create so that's perfect and now finally system CTL start IP tables and again if you want to verify that it's doing the thing that you want it to do you can always run status and I can see that it's active and I don't see any error messages um, I've got a few lines of log here and it all looks good started IPv4 firewall with IP tables so that's all good so the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going and disabling SE Linux once again so if you need to, go back to lab one and uh, figure out how you're supposed to do that. Uh, I'm just going to go quickly review. So most likely what you have to do is um, be editing a file. So here's the name of the file. Okay, we're in here. We want to change enforcing into disabled. Well, that didn't want, that didn't do what I wanted it to, but let me just do it here. Ah, it's this. There we go. Uh, since I have done everything that they're asking for in uh, lab number two for this. VM, I can move on to creating CentOS 2, which is going to be very, very similar to this one. 